Hello everyone. Today I would like you to explore a little bit of technology in the neurological industry. This is an electroencephalogram, or put simply an EEG. And what this device does is it takes and detects the electric signals that are produced by your brain. And these are the signals that your neurons fire in order to um, make the brain do everything that it does. You know, electro is electricity and encephalo means brain. Now, this EEG in particular is the Emotive Insight. Uh, it's a channel, it's a five channel mobile EEG, meaning that it has five sensors. And being an EEG, it is non-invasive, which means that it does not require any form of surgery and just sits nicely on the head, like so. You'll notice that the five sensors, which are coming out of this much larger place where the amplifier and the computer module may be sitting, these five sensors are sticking out, these arms, are in different places on the skull. You have two temporal ones on either side. You have two in front, which would be on the frontal lobe, and one sitting on the crown of the head, or rather a bit behind the crown of the head, which would be roughly the parietal lobe, or the, um, the motor cortex area. And what an EEG is usually used for is uh, development, although it can be used recreationally for meditation. Now, the biggest problem right now, besides perhaps simply the engineering aspect of it, uh, detection of signals and analysis of signals from the computer, is finding out what the signals do um, and what they mean. There's a lot of spatial and temporal data involved with uh, brain-computer interfaces simply because of how much, you know, how many transmissions are being done by the brain at every second. And so while we can sort of map out what our brain is doing by simply looking at uh, where the sensor is spatially and um, the amplitude and the frequency of the signals, it, be, it can be challenging at times. Well, enough about that. I've developed a little thing, uh, and this is it. It's a simple cursor navigation program, and this is going to be my first demonstration of it. Uh, and you can see here uh, on the screen, you have the option to train a command. Now, what a command exactly is, I will explain that. As I've already said, the EEG detects the brain signal. And what happens after that is it sends the brain signal to my computer where the computer can display the signal. Now, of course, I'm not simply looking or observing at the signal, I'm developing something. So it actually sends it to this Python program that I've developed. And in order to do that, it uses this Bluetooth that you'll see here. I have a USB dongle inside, connected here at the USB port of my computer, which will take the signal in from here. Now, what a command is, is something that I set previously by wearing this uh, EEG to a WebSocket, which is simply just a server that will store the data that is uh, that corresponds with each command. And it sends it through a JSON RPC, which is a, is a method of communication between the Python program and the WebSocket server. So we'll send the data from my EEG to the Python program and then to the WebSocket server through the JSON. The WebSocket will then send back the response to that, which would be the command 
uh, in response to the data back to the Python, where it then sends it simply to my monitor and um, it does whatever to perform some form of action based off the command. Now, what I'm doing here in my program is I am making the command one of five. So there's the four directional commands up, down, left, and right, and also a click command, as it's a cursor navigation program, which will move the cursor around uh, based off of the command. So if you see here's the cursor right now, I'm using this uh, wired mouse, but later on I will release my hands from the mouse and demonstrate it. So first I'm actually going to have to train the command. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And you can see at the commands that it asks you to train. Uh, besides the five commands, there's also a neutral option, which is simply to tell the web, the web socket uh, what your mental state is when you're doing absolutely nothing. So it can compare those to the other commands. So I'm going to first set a neutral one. And I'm just going to show you uh, just me doing absolutely nothing. So, excuse me. So first, because emotive is with the emotive the insight is with the emotive family of products, I have to first connect it via this Cortex UI program. That so let's run that again. It's very important to make sure that we are connected and we will train the neutral command. So the thing with brain-computer interfaces is that they're often very uh, difficult to differentiate between two commands, simply because um, you know there's a large amount of uh, power and a low amount of power. So it can be very binary when it's trying to come up with you know a command relative to the other commands. Uh, the commands tend to be more binary, where it's one or the other. But in this case, we will try to do one more, and I'll do it in a different direction so that you can see uh, an obvious movement of the cursor. So it's called lift, it's just up, and we will train this command. All right, so now it's time to see this actually action. I'll put the cursor right here, and you'll see that my hands will remain here for the whole time. And let's see how well this program goes. Now this is mm, the most simple program that I have developed out of the three. So you may see that there could be a few bugs here and there simply because it's difficult to differentiate between multiple commands. But here we, let's see. So you can see that the cursor is definitely moving up, and when I when I talk, it seems to stop because when I'm talking. It's in a somewhat of a neutral state. And as soon as I stop talking, it moves left again. Um, you may notice that it is not going upwards, despite uh, training an upwards command. This could be simply because, simply due to the fact that, you know. These commands all measure from the same uh, the same spatial area, you know, and it can be difficult. Uh, if say the commands were measuring, say one was measuring the temporal lobe and one was measuring the prefrontal cortex, then it would be very obvious uh, differences because they're just uh, spatially different. But since I'm going to move the mount cursor back here so you can see results again. But since uh, it's all measuring just the overall power of the synaptic transmissions, 
you can only really see uh, two commands at play here. So let's just run it a bit more so you can watch the cursor move across the screen. You'll, you might notice by now that when I talk, it tends to be more neutral or when I monotone out. And when I'm more calm and clear-minded, it uh, moves more leftwards. Now I'm going to try something, and perhaps a more extreme expression, and see what happens. <sighs> well, let's see if it stops now. Well, there you have it. Uh, notice that when I was doing the extreme uh, expression, uh, there was, it was only moving leftwards, there was no neutral there. Uh, you see right now it fluctuates between left and neutral because it's trying to... I didn't make a command where I was talking, so it's kind of uh, associating it with one or another over and over again. So that's pretty interesting. So. This problem is, you know, very apparent in the fact that uh, when you try to make multiple commands on the same spatial area, you will see these types of problems. So my second project, uh, I try to minimize this problem. And hold on one sec, actually, it's on my uh, USB. The first one may have been more applicable. Or, uh, you know, <clears throat> you can imagine the uses of it, uh, paralysis, patience, or just simply, you know, entertainment. Um, Brain-computer interfaces are becoming more popular in the gaming industry, simply because it's a different type of input method. And you can imagine, you know, it would be interesting to play a game with your brain rather than a keyboard or uh, some type of controller. But the second one, uh, it is developed so that it doesn't have the same error as the cursor navigation project. Uh, this one is an audio playing interface, but uh, you'll notice that there are two commands, and these commands are not ones that uh, I do with the, with the Emotive API. I use instead Emotive API's uh, facial expression data types, which uh, they look at the facial muscles. Um, and facial muscles are uh, easy to detect because the muscle signals from there. There's just so many muscles on the face. You may think that you know the arms or the legs may be easier to detect because they're proportionally larger. Uh, but that's not true. Uh, it's actually the it's actually the the face and especially like the lips, uh, the eyes, and outside the face, the fingers. Because despite not being as large as uh, say the arms, the legs, there's just so many muscles. It's the quantity of muscles rather than the size that determines signal strength and a large proportion of the motor cortex is actually used for the lips, the fingers, uh, the face. Uh, and so the two commands that uh, is being used here, uh, there's one that if you create a facial expression of surprise, so that would be like, like eyes slightly open, mouth open, uh, the frontal muscles are a big part of it, like that. The music will change. There's only two songs, so not a lot of selection, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's an interesting. It's a prototype, I would say. And volume is the other setting, which could be adjusted with uh, upper facial movement. So that would include the eyes, uh, those the forehead. So let's take a look at it. Here we go. And now to demonstrate the audio playing interface. So I'm just going to open up this with the window. 
And you'll see here that we have the two options, Crab Rave and Megalovania. Uh, Crab Rave, of course, is Noise Storms uh, 2018. I'm going to lower the volume a bit in a second. Yeah, just lower the system volume. But Crab Rave, uh, Noise Storms 2018 uh, hit. And Megalovania, Toby Fox's 2015 Undertale soundtrack. Now, you can see here, um, I display the graphics with Pygame, and I play the audio with Pygame, but the audio volume and the audio source is determined by this EEG. Now, you can see here, I'm not really moving my upper face, I'm really just talking with my lower face. But as soon as I move my upper face, like I blink, you can see that you get more volume. Right. If I move my forehead like that, more volume. Uh, at the same time, I could change the song. Right now it's just changing because I'm talking, so it's moving my frontal muscles and it's registering it as a surprise. If I act in a surprise manner, oh. well, here I think I've actually set it to a match of frowning rather than surprise, so it's taking the muscles here because the frown is just the, the muscles around the mouth. I'm not exactly sure uh, what they're called. I uh, don't know that much about the kinesiology, but you can see here when I frown, the music definitely changes. If I stay smiling, it should, well, perhaps it uses the same muscles when you're smiling as if not, that might be it's interesting. Yeah, I'll demonstrate this a bit more. Um, you may imagine that you know if you actually wanted to use this application, it has, practically, uh, it wouldn't really work very well. Uh, simply, as soon as you blink, you would have it blasting. But it's an interesting concept, right? The idea here is that um, you could use your your brain rather than another input device, which would be a keyboard, or a mouse, um, touch screen, to control an application. And, you know, this is just the beginning of it, right? You have, you know, at its core, this is just the most simple type of application, right? It's just an audio plane uh, software. And you can imagine that in the future, uh, more significant software like software for security, for uh, finances, internet searching, um, could be all uh, applied to the brain-computer interfaces simply because of you know the the range of it. It just depends on what direction you go with brain-computer interfaces, and that's why it's such an interesting industry. So I'm gonna have to sign off there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it may have inspired you to make your own uh, EEG application, or if you're already working on one, I hope it motivates you to make it good. Uh, and that's all I have to say about it, I suppose.